Okay, so more about electromagnetic radiation and interactions with different features. So the first thing that you need to understand is that energy is, is conserved. Okay, and this what this is basically meaning is that the total amount of energy has to always equal the sum of that which is reflected, transmitted and absorbed. Okay? So if more energy or light is reflected, that means less is transmitted or absorbed. If more is absorbed, less is transmitted and reflected. Okay? Now this actually affects different features in our images and what we see. So if we have a look at the little diagram here, for example, we're looking at the to total amount of incident energy and that being a sum of what we see reflected, what is absorbed into this water body, for example, and that which is transmitted. And that is the same for any wavelength of light. Okay, so, so some terminology. Individual electromagnetic radiation interactions. First of all, reflection. All right. By definition, this is the redirection of light striking a non-transparent surface. Okay. This can be from a range of diffuse reflection to specular. Okay. We'll come back to this in a moment as well. The next term we have is absorption. Okay, the amount of energy is actually absorbed by a particular feature. And then transmission is actually where the energy passes through some sort of material. Okay, so light going through water to get to the bottom and reflect off sand or seagrass or whatever. So if we have a bit of an idea about <coughs> what these types of interactions might look like, so for example, we have reflection. Light comes in and then might be reflected at various different angles back off the surface. Okay. So it might be reflected quite strongly back in one direction or more diffusely back in all directions. Absorption is where light comes in and is absorbed by a particular surface. And transmission, going through that surface. Okay, and there might, there might also be some sort of refraction at that surface as well as there is at the surface of water. A little bit more about reflectance. Okay, we have from perfectly diffuse to perfectly specular. Right, so specular is like a mirror and diffuse is where light is reflected back in most angles. Okay. This is useful for remote sensing in terms of looking at different, different features and their spectral properties, as it doesn't matter what angle you're looking at that feature, it will always look the same. Whereas a, spectra, a, a specular reflector, for example a water body, can be quite problematic in that you'll see sunlight reflected back at you rather than being able to see the surface of the water itself. You'll just see the sun. I'm sure you've all looked at water bodies where you've been able to see that mirror-like reflection. The amount of electromagnetic radiation that we, that we see at a sensor actually depends on different angles that we also have. So for example, in the first diagram here, we've got a camera um, at this over the top of one particular tree right and it looks at different trees at different angles okay so these are these are the exact same trees but the way that they appear to this camera will appear different because this the tree on the right hand side for example the camera is viewing this the sunny side of the tree whereas on the left hand side it's viewing the shady side of the tree Okay, so this, this also affects different features like water bodies and atmospheric haze. So another example of a water body there where you've got this specular reflectance. Okay, it's not really useful for being able to see anything that's in the water.